Hi there guys, here we have a nice fun and challenging question in sequence and series because it's not as straightforward as the usual. Uh, let's read the question and figure out how to answer this one. The sum of the first 20 terms of the series 2 to the power of n plus 2 to the power of n plus 1 plus 3 times 2 to the power of n plus dot 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 is equal to 1680. Determine the value of n. Okay, so here we have a series. Uh, a series means we are just adding a sequence of numbers. Um, so there's some kind of pattern, but we don't know if this pattern is arithmetic or geometric. So that's step number one. We first need to identify what pattern this is. The second thing we need to note is that when you add all the terms of this pattern, we basically end up with that total. And there are 20 terms in the series. If I add all 20 terms, I end up with this total. What I need to work out is the value of n in this pattern. Okay. Now, n is not the number of terms in this pattern because we already know the number of terms. But n is rather an exponent to this number here, to this integer 2. So to solve n, we are going to add all these terms and make it equal to that total. But first I need to find out is this arithmetic or is this geometric. So to do that I'm going to test if it has a constant ratio or a constant difference. And uh, we'll start with the ratio because I notice that we have exponents. So this could very well be a geometric pattern. Now let's test that theory. If we say uh, term 2 over term 1, this should be the same as term 3 over term 2. So our second term is the 2 to the power of n plus 1. Now I'm going to write that as 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of 1. Okay, because when I divide it by this first term, I notice these 2 to the power of n's cancel, and then we are just left with the 2 to the power of 1. So the ratio is 2 for the first two terms. Now if that is going to be consistent here, then I know we have a ratio, or a constant ratio, which means it's geometric. So let's test that theory out. We're going to substitute the third term divided by the second term. Again, I'm writing the second term as 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of invisible 1. The 2 to the power of n's cancel, and your ratio for this is 3 over 2. Now, since 3 over 2 is not equal to 2, Therefore, we do not have a constant ratio, and this, therefore, is not a geometric pattern. So, I guess we then have to test the arithmetic pattern. Now, let's test if we have a constant difference by subtracting the first two terms, and then seeing if that is equal to the third term minus the second term. We'll start here. So, again, we say the second term, which I'm writing like this, minus the first term and then we factorize by taking out 2 to the power of n so we are left with 2 minus 1 uh, 2 minus 1 is just 1 and 1 times anything always stays the same so this is just 2 to the power of n let's see if this difference is also going to be 2 to the power of n so I'll write the third term, which is that, minus the second term, which I'm going to write like this, again, 2 to the power of 1. Uh, if I take out 2 to the power of n, I am left with 3 here in front, minus the 2 here at the back. So again, this is 3 minus 2, which is 1, and we are just again left with the 2 to the power of n. So, we do have a constant difference which means that this is an arithmetic pattern. So, to now calculate n, we are going to add up all these terms, there are 20 of them, and we're going to equate that to the 1618. But I'm not going to add them up manually. Instead, I'm just going to use the sum formula. Now because I'm going to
Now before I do that, let me just show you exactly what's happening here. This is 2 to the power of n and we said this can be written as 2 to the power of 1. So there's basically 2, 2 to the power of n's over here and here we have 3, 2 to the power of n's. And you can now clearly see that there's a difference of 2 to the power of n each time we are adding another 2 to the power of n. I'm sure the next term will then be 4 times 2 to the power of n because again we're just adding a 2 to the power of n. So this goes up all the way till 20 but just to make this a little bit more simple for myself I'm going to let 2 to the power of n be equal to k. Right? That means that this is then now k, this would be 2k, this 3k, and that 4k. Okay, and we go all the way up until 20k. If you add all of these up, it should equal to that total. I'm going to be using the sum formula to add this up a bit quicker. Okay, um, n is the number of terms, which is 20. This is not the same n that we're trying to calculate. Remember that n that we're trying to work out is hidden within the k. So let's first solve k and then we'll get the n. So a is the first term, which in this case is k. n is the number of terms, which is 20. The difference we said was k, because each time you're just adding k, we're just adding that 2 to the power of n. Okay, so we're going to simplify this. Uh, 20 divided by 2 is 10. Oh, one thing I forgot to substitute is the sum of the series, 1680. Then I'm going to continue to simplify. Uh, this is 2k plus this would be 19k. Uh, 2 plus 19 is 21. If I multiply that by 10, that's 210k. And then if we divide 1680 by the 210, k is therefore equal to 8. Okay, so let's keep in mind that we are trying to solve n not k. However, we started out by saying that 2 to the power of n is equal to k. And here we worked out that k is equal to 8. So that must mean that 2 to the power of n is equal to 8, which means n is equal to 3.